Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, today, I want us to talk a little bit about obedience to the Word of God. Last time, I posted a video about how God has saved the obedient one throughout the history of the Bible, since the time of Noah, the righteous man who was saved by the flood, all the way until our day. And each time man sinned against God, and God's wrath have to come upon man, God always had the way to save his righteous one. What I call, what the Bible called the remnant, those who are left, a group of people who are left. And today, I want us to continue and talk a little bit about obedience. What is obedient to God's word? Why is the obedient is so important in God's sight? And why obedience is so necessary in our life as we live in the world? Who should we obey? What should we obey? Obey what? And what the reason for obedience? And today, I want to break down a little bit and since it's a little longer, we're going to have maybe another two, three, four video series of obedience until we reach uh, the end of what God has put in my heart and to teach all of us because I'm also learning from the world. Before, let us bow down in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that uh, you have given us. You have given us opportunity to come before you, to listen to your word, to your servant. Open our ears so we can hear you. Not to hear me, the person who is speaking right now, but to hear your voice to him. And those of us who are going to watch this, let us not see the person who is speaking, but let us see you, God. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for we have been walking astray from you. Help us to understand who you are and what you want us to do. Lead us in the right path, O oh Lord, so we can be like Jesus. We need you now in this hour. For only you who can save us. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that you shed on the cross for us to be redeemed. Open our ears now and our heart and our mind. Let the Holy Spirit guide us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today again, I want to continue our talk about the obedience to God's word. Our first reading today is going to be on 2 Peter. We're going to have a lot of reading because I, I, I don't say things, just say. But I want us to go through scriptures. So through the scriptures that we know what we're saying is written. And it was not written by me. But it was written for those the Lord put the, his spirit upon them to teach us to put his word in the paper, in books. So we have no excuse. Let's go to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2, we'll start from verse 1 and then we'll go to, I think, until 10. The title is good to, before we read it, we read the title also. The title of the message here says, False Teachers and Their Destruction. And this is what Peter says. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, among us. There was a false prophet then, and there will be false prophet and teacher now, and there are so many. 
and there will be also, because the word of God is continuing endlessly. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their deprived conduct and will bring the way of the truth into, into disrupt. Now we read this word, as you read, think about this word that we're reading. Before even I go far, each word, paragraph or sentence that I'm reading, it makes totally sense to me. I don't know about you, but to me, it makes totally sense what Peter is telling us here. Because these things are happening now in our life. You see, the word of God is really I don't know how to explain that because God is really God. He knows. He knows from the beginning what's going to happen. He predestinate and then he tell us ahead of time so we can be prepared. So those who are wise to understand that to take heed of the instructions and be prepared and be careful. There will also be, just as they were the first teacher among you, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord. We know that. We see that. Some people say, we cannot read this part of the Bible. We cannot read this part of the Bible. Because this one is for Old Testament, for the old time, and this one is for us and the New Testament. Division there already. But they're introducing heresy to teaching false. Even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their deprived conduct and we bring the way of the truth into disrupt. See, many are following this way. In their greed, listen to this. This teacher will exploit you. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we have a scene from, let's say from the top, from mega churches all the way down, a lot of teachers, pastors, whatever the name they call them, bishop or whatever, exploiting people, teaching prosperity and so on and so forth to exploit those who are blindly walking in the way. They will exploit you in their greed with fabricated stories. <laughs> their condemnation has long been hanging over them and that the destruction has not been sleeping. Read those words carefully and look how we are going now. Those who are called children of God. For if God did not spare angels when they sin, it, but to send them to hell, putting them in chains and darkness, to be here for judgment if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people but protect Noah a preacher of righteousness and seven others if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example, listen to that. He made Sodom and Gomorrah an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. Those who been in school, they says, what going to happen? That means, 
Peter is talking about what's going to happen in the future. That means after them, the generation that are coming after and after until our time and then the time beyond. These are the examples God made to what's going to happen to us now. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the deprived conduct of the lawless, for what a righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deed he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord know how to rescue the godly from trials. Mm. That was my message in the previous video. And to hold the ungodly to go unrighteous for a punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Despise authority. Those who are despising the authority, whose authority they despise? The authority of living God. Why the authority? Who is he? Why we have to say authority? Because why did God have authority? Well, we call him what? King of kings. Lord of lords. There is any kingdom, my friend. There's no kingdom on earth that does not have authority. Laws, rule, regulation, and decrees. God also, as a king, he have law, rule, regulation, decrees, and he have authority. So, when he have the authority, the people have to obey and go by the authority of God, his rule and regulation. We live in the United States. We have to go by the authority of what? Of the nation. There's a law in the U.S. If you break that law, you'll be condemned by that law. But we, as the Bible said, we fabricate a story. We say there's no law in God now because we have grace. We will come into that. We will come into the grace to sh show what is grace and what is the law. But right now, let's focus on disobedient. Remember the word authority. Why God talking about authority here? This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. They despise the authority of God because of their desire, the corrupt desire of the flesh. Let's go to the obedient. Why God have to talk about authority here? Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. And then I will come to understand why God is talking about the authority. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's start from 14 to 17. Listen to this. Do not be equally yoked. Do not be yoked together with unbeliever. For what do righteousness and the wickedness have in common? Or what a fellowship can light have with the darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belia? Or what those the believer have in common with unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God says, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God. And they will be my people, says the Lord. Therefore, listen to this. Therefore, come out from them and be separated, says the Lord. Come out from them 
and be separated, says the Lord. See, read this word that is in 2 Corinthians, chapter 2 from 14 to 17. Read them carefully and read the word in 2 Peter 1 to 10 and compare to what Peter is saying here and to what Paul is saying here to the Corinthians. You will understand why is God want us to be separated from the world? He said, be separated from the world. We are in the world. How are we going to be separate ourselves from the world? Go we'll live somewhere else in another planet. Why is God want us to be separate to the world, from the world? If we look the prayer of Jesus Christ, I think it's in the... Uh, in John, uh, John 17, John 17, I think from 6 to 20 or 21, Jesus is praying for his disciple. We read that in uh, the video that I did before. He said, Father, these are those you gave it to me. They were yours and they were from the world, but you took them out of the world. And now I'm praying for them not to take them out of the world because I'm coming to you, but since they are still in the world, protect them. But they are not of the world because you already took them out of, that means they were separated from the world. Why Jesus want us to be separate from the world? I'll give you the reason why. Because in the, this world, there's a one person who is ruling the entire world. Who is the king of this world? Or call me him the prince. Because that's how Jesus called him. The prince of darkness. He is the prince. As this is his kingdom. And he's ruling it. And then there's another guy. A prince also. We call him the prince of light. They are both come from the same father. His kingdom is not from this world. His kingdom is the above. But he will bring his kingdom from above down. But not yet. Before he bring his kingdom down, there's another person who is ruling this world because of Satan. Before he becomes Satan, he was a Lucifer created by God Almighty himself. Until he sinned against God, then he becomes Satan. He was thrown on earth. This is his kingdom. Why Jesus want us to be separate from the world? Because the prince of darkness who is ruling the world have his law, his rule, his regulation, his way of life of living. And if we are not separate from the world, we have been ruled by his regulation, by his decrees, by his way of doing things. But if we are out of the world, then we are not ruled by him. We are ruled by the rule and regulation of a prince of light, of God himself. Now we are then, will be called the children of Most High God. Because we go by the rule and the regulation of God. For those who think that Satan is not ruling this world, let's go to the book of John. John, John chapter 14, let's start from there, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, we we'll start verse 30, listen to what Jesus said, I will not say much more to you, he's telling his disciple, before uh, whether he was promising them the Holy Spirit. I will not say much to you for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. The prince of this world is coming. Who is he? Satan. Let's go further again. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Listen to the word of God. Let's start from 
chapter 2, verse 1, and go to 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world. Listen to this. We follow what? The ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are what? Disobedient. Listen to this word carefully. As for you, you and I, we were dead in our transgression and sin, in which we used to live. Those who are born again used to live that, like that. When we follow the way of this world, you see, that's why Jesus said, come out, separate yourself from the world. And we follow the ruler, ha -ha, ruler of the kingdom of the air, Satan himself. That's what Jesus has been talking here about. The spirit who is now at work to those who are disobedient. Disobedient. Those who are disobedient, they are obe disobedient for what? Disobedient of God's words, God's rule, God's laws. They are disobedient to them. They are ruled by who? By Satan himself. When you can't obey God, there's no other rule you can obey. If you can't obey God's rule, you have definitely you have to obey certain rule. Because there is no or the place. There's no in between. Either you are with God or you are not with God. You are with God or you are with Satan. You can't say that I'm in between. No way, my friend. Listen to the word of God. I'll bring you another scripture. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. 5 verse 19. We know that we are the children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. The whole world is under the control of the evil one in the Bible. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. The whole world is under the control of the evil one. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12, 9. What does it say here? The great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. Who led the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angel with him. Do you hear that? The great dragon was heard down, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angel with him. Separate yourself from them. Jesus wants us to be separated. Why? Because there is a two ruler. One, his kingdom is in heaven. Yet, it will be coming down, but not yet. The other one, his kingdom is here, now. Today, as you and I talking, he is ruling the whole universe, the whole earth. With his rule, regulation, law, and the way of doing. Jesus says, separate yourself from the world. So that way you will not be ruled by certain rule and regulation. My friend, today I want to ask you a question. Who is your king? Don't tell me you don't have any though. Because you do. There are only two. There are only two prince who rule. Prince of light and prince of darkness. Which rules and law and regulation are you following? Of God 
or of the world. If you following the rule and law and regulation of God, do you really? Do you really following them? What are they? God have given us his rule and regulation in the Ten Commandments. You may say, oh, the Ten Commandments, those are all. We don't go by them anymore because we are on a grace. Really? Well, I'll ask you a question. You tell me, which kingdom? Why? Tell me which kingdom that you know in the world that have no rule and regulation. And then if you say so, why? Why do you pray the Lord prayer? Go, oh, let us hear how you pray. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And thy will be done on earth as what it is in heaven. In a heaven God have a law. Rule, regulations. That's how he's ruling the whole universe. The angels and everything we, we don't even see, no. But we read. Because this rank of angels and all that, we are not going through that right now. He ruled them by the same law and rule and regulation. But the you and I, those who are saying that there is no Ten Commandments anymore, no rules. Well, stop praying the Lord's Prayer. What the kingdom that you're calling to come from heaven? Your kingdom come, you will be done as it is in heaven. Really? No, my friend. They're the same rule and regulation. Jesus trick us. Those who don't understand the scriptures, I understood that the Lord prayer is the Ten Commandments. Except the Lord just made them in two. Love God with your heart, mind, and soul. That the first commandment, that the first one, two, three, and four. And the love neighbor as you love the self, yourself. It starts from five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. He made the two come ten in two. He simplified them. You love God and you love your neighbor as you love yourself. They are, they were, they are, and they will be forevermore. They will not change. Read the scriptures. Jesus tell us to separate ourselves from the world. Why? Because the world have its own rules, regulation, laws, and God have his. If we are in the world, we can obey God's law. We obey what the world wants us to obey. We've seen it. As we read in 2 Peter, there will be false teachers. They've been coming and telling you all those false things that the command are not exist anymore because we live in grace. They took the whole book of Old Testament and throw that away. We said we cannot deal with these laws that the same mistake the children of Israel did. And we have been done. Look now, since we disobey God, we took his command away from us. We're trying to do what the world wants us to do. There's adultery. There's an evil on, on, on greed. There's all kinds of malices and all kinds of destructive heresy that Peter says is now. And there's inside the church. My brother. Separate yourself from the world. You know, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, before we go to Isaiah, let's go to the book of James. James, the book of James, James chapter, James chapter 1. If we look James chapter 1 uh, on verse 13, I think, 13. Yeah, 13 to 15. 
When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does they tempt, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and entice. Then, after the desire have conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. Remember those words. When sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. Listen to what God says. A rebellion nation. Doesn't that sound like us? Hear me, you heaven. Listen, earth, for the law has spoken. God is calling heaven and earth as a witnesses. I reread children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. God is talking to his children. Who are they? You and I, who call ourselves children of God, so called Christian. The ox knows his master, the donkey its owner's manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. We do not. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a broad of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the law. They have pruned the Holy One of Israel and turn their back on him. That's us. We have turned the back of who? On God. We have turned back on God, law, rule, regulation, because we said we live by grace, not by law. Yes, we live by grace, but without the law, we cannot have grace. <laughs> we will come into that later. Disobedience of men against God, rule, and regulation. My friend, if we obey God, we will come out of the world. Because in the world, there's no love for God. Because we are not ruled by the rule and regulation of God. We are ruled with the rule and regulation of Satan. We have read in John, in Revelation, in Ephesians, and in one John, that the whole world is ruled by Satan, by the great serpent, dragon. And Jesus said, come out of the world. God has called us here rebels. I look at the definition. What is a rebel? Rebel in the dictionary it says, rise in opposition. Rise in opposition or armed resistance to an established government or ruler. <laughs> Rise in opposition of what? We oppose God's laws. I'm resistant to an established government. God has his own government. And any government have rule and regulation. We oppose God's laws. Resist authority. Those are the definition of rebel. And then in the book of Isaiah, God to see what? I ruled the children and they brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. We have rebelled against God. God says that we become, we oppose him. We come become opposition of God, rule and regulation. If they say there's a rebel in Congo, that give you an example from there's a Congo, the rebel in Congo. That means there are a group of people who doesn't want to go by the rule and regulation of the Congolese government. If they say the rebel in the United States, there are a group of people who doesn't want to go by the rule and regulation of the US government. They want to throw away the constitution, they want to have their own constitution, own rule and regulation they can live by. 
We have a constitution that God has given us, but we rebel against the constitution of God. We want to live like the world lives. But we forget Satan also have his own constitution, his rule and regulation, that he was the whole world that the Bible said he ruled the whole world. My friend, who is ruling you? Which law are you obeying? Separate yourself from the world, says the Lord. Be under his wing, his government, his establishment. But we rebel against God. If you look, you read the Isaiah 1 from verse 2 all the way to 31. Look at those words written there and look how we live life right now. You will cry. You will cry. If you really love God, you will cry. I only have four minutes left for this video. But uh, come back. Let's go back to the next phase. And I'm trying to go further and try to understand why Jesus wanted to, us to come out this world. Because we need to obedient. Obedient to God's word. That is the key. Of righteousness. No faith. Because without obeying. How can you. Believe. The word that you don't obey. There is obedient. Then come love. Then come faith. And then go on. If you don't start obedient. Is the root of everything else. Faith the love and all that. Those are nothing before in the God eyes. Because, my friend, in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, this is the definition of love to God. Let's find it. Love. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. In fact, this is love for God. Listen to this. This is the definition of love for God. Keep, to keep his command. That's it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. In fact, this is love for God. You have two that. That's the definition of love for God. To keep his command. That means the definition of keeping God's command is love him. To show God that you love him, you have to keep his command. And Jesus spoke the same word. Jesus says the same word in John chapter 14. Chapter 14, yeah, verse 15. If you love me, keep my command. You see that, my friend? Obedient to God's word. Separate yourself. Because, my friend, when you are separate from yourself, from the world, you will not follow the way of this world. There are so much I want to tell you today. <sighs> but my time is just got little. I will meet you in the next video. Check the next video. We will continue of obedience. Why God wants us to separate ourselves from the world? What is obedient? What is his law and decrees? And what is grace? We cannot mix those two. They are two different separate things. And the both are good for us and for God. And God wants us to follow both. Because without the one, we cannot have the other one. Separate yourself, my friend, from the world. For the world has its own rule and regulation and law. And the Lord God has his rule and regulation and law, which he wants us to walk by them. Remember, in the book of Isaiah, he called us rebel. Check the definition of rebel. Rebellious nation 
If we are rebel, that means we are rising in opposition of an establishing government, the government of living God. King of kings, Lord our Lord. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Peace be.